Out of the fog, out of the night, and into his American adventures comes Bulldog Drummond. Here in my mind, I'm trying to remember, trying to fit the pieces together. But nothing makes sense yet. This room I find myself in, this room where I see everything through a dancing yellow haze, and the voices, the faraway voices that come down to me through a dark, echoing alley. I, I try to raise myself, but I can't. But I've got to keep trying because there isn't much time left. Time. Through the yellow haze, I could just make out the face of the clock. The hands creep toward midnight. In an hour, it will be done. I've got to stop it somehow, some way. In an hour, a man will die. That much I can remember now. But uh, there are the other pieces in the crazy jigsaw puzzle. The whirling pieces which fly sickeningly around inside here in my mind. Voices. My name is Linda Bennett. I need your help. That voice, that's one of them. My name is Linda Bennett. I need your help. Linda Bennett. Linda Bennett. Linda Bennett. Yes, and the train. The shiny metal serpent racing across the flatlands of the southwest. Denny and I were aboard the Blue Comet headed home from California. After a pleasant chat in the lounge car, we went back to our compartment to turn in. Why, Captain Drummond, the door is locked. Oh, ridiculous, Denny. These compartment doors lock only from the inside. Here, let me try on. Well, you're right, it is locked. Well, then someone must be in there, in our compartment. Denny and I stood there for a moment, puzzled. I was just about to knock when suddenly the door opened. Yes? What is it? Well, sir, what do you make of that? Denny, I'm speechless. Well, what do you two want? What do we want? You are trying to enter my compartment. Uh, <clears throat> young lady, that appears to be a regrettable error on your part. What? Uh, regrettable, Denny. Uh, sometimes your choice of words fits the occasion badly. An error, yes. Regrettable, I don't think so. I'm sure this very attractive young lady... Look, will you tell me what you're driving at? I admit your presence enhances the drab decor of a train compartment, but uh, I don't recall having you included when I booked this space. You mean this is your compartment? In a word, yes. Uh, that's our luggage on the seat there. That luggage? Oh. I didn't notice. Really? I say, she's up to something. Now, uh, see here, anybody can make a mistake. The door, Denny. Very well, Captain Drummond. Captain. Oh, are you Captain Drummond? I thought you knew. No, why should I? You picked out my compartment in which to hide. How do you know I was hiding? A doctor recognizes a malady by its symptoms. My business has its symptomatic arrows, too. Although I admit I can't quite yet put the finger on your particular malady. I'll need some background data first. My name is Linda Bennett. I need your help. I'll call you Linda. <laughs> Dr. Drummond's bedside manner. Uh, go ahead, Linda. I'm on my way to Mexico City to find my brother. You're off to a bad start. This train is headed due east. Yes, I know. I'm getting off at Tucson. I'm flying from Tucson to Mexico. I was going to take the plane from Los Angeles, but he followed me to the ticket office, so I had to change my plans. And uh, who is he? Well, I don't know who, his, who he is or what his name is, but I think he's the same one who spoke to me on the phone. I, I'm, I'm frightened, Captain Drummond. Awfully frightened. Sit down, Linda. Sit right here. No, I've got to find Robert. I've got to find out what's happened to my brother. All right, I'll help you. I'll do whatever I can. 
Thank you, Captain Drummond. Thank you. But uh, you could do something for me right now. What? Well, here. Take this envelope. It's addressed to a general delivery number in Mexico City. Yes. Uh, what's in the envelope, Miss Bennett? A note to my brother telling him I'm coming there and where he can meet me. You see, he warned me not to come. In his last letter, he told me to send all my mail to that post office box number. He said he wouldn't be able to answer me, but that he'd get all my messages. Captain Drummond, I want you to mail that letter for me at the next stop. If I get off the train before Tucson, I, I may never get to Mexico City alive. Uh, the man who followed you about in Los Angeles? Yes. He's on this train. I saw him. Where? When? Well, I was returning to my compartment from the ladies' lounge. When I opened the door, he was sitting there. I turned and ran through the cars. Then I tried this door and it was open. I locked myself in and then you came. What's your compartment number? 21, car C. 21, car C. Denny, you stay here with her. Oh, Captain Drummond, wait. Yes? Please. You'd better not go there. Why not? I'm anxious to have a chat with your pursuit. No, you better not go. He was sitting there with a gun in his hand. He'll think it's me, and when you open that door, he'll kill you. Ah, uh, what is it? Porter, message for Miss Bennett. I walked in quietly, quickly, my gun pointed. But there was nothing to point it at except the train windows. And then the door slammed shut behind me. I didn't turn in time. You don't move another inch. You do, and I make a hole in your back. That was rather a clumsy entrance I made, wasn't it? Yeah, sort of. You'll oblige me by dropping your gun in the seat there. Yes, well, you put it so nicely, how can I refuse? Now uh, turn around so I can see what you look like. How's this? Well, you don't look stupid. My actions are deceiving. Sit down. Go right ahead, sit down on that seat opposite. Thank you. We'll have a talk. That gun you're holding is going to make conversation difficult. I get lonely just sitting around waiting to do what I'm paid for. I'm glad you came in. I got somebody to talk to while I wait. Maybe you're waiting in vain. She'll come back. Well, I'm sure she won't. Then I'll find her someplace else. I always find them. That's my job. That's all? No. I kill them. Killing is my business. Nice work you're in. It's just like any other business, only harder. Rather risky, too, I imagine. Yeah, it's risky. Hey, where do you tie in with that Bennett girl? I just want to make sure that she remains alive. She's a nice-looking girl. Love, huh? No. Me, I don't trust him when they're as nice-looking as her. They most times got something tricky going on in back of their pretty faces. Who's paying you to kill Miss Bennett, and why? You're a good guy to talk to. You seem to understand. I'd like to tell you because you're such a good guy, but... You know how it is. There's your secrets of the train. Yeah, that's it. Sorry. Well, as long as she ain't coming back, I better get going. You tell her something for me, will you? You tell her she can expect me anywhere along the line between here and Mexico City. Now, get up. I will. Face the window. Now, that's it. Now, you stay right there. You take my advice. Count to ten before you come out of this compartment. It's nice talking to you. So long. I didn't take his advice about the counting. I pulled open the compartment door and rushed out into the corridor. And then I stopped. The corridor was empty. The man whose business was killing had disappeared. A killer was on that train. A confessed, cold, businesslike murderer. He was being paid to shoot down Linda Bennett. And Linda Bennett was with Denny in my compartment. I hurried back through the train. I opened the door and started to cross the platform that led to my car. And then a hand reached out and grasped my shoulder. Call it, you. I want to talk to you. Well, I've seemed to become a popular conversationalist. Hey, what do you got your hands up like that for? I find it excellent insurance against being shot in the back. 
I promise you no untoward moves on my part. <laughs> ah, don't be a sap, Drummond. Well, what? <laughs> Drop your hands and turn around. The only thing I'm going to point at you is this. I, I, I don't understand. Well, a badge like this should be familiar to a guy like you. Police? Yes, West Coast. Homicide Division. Lieutenant, name's Greg, Sid Greg. Oh, well, believe me, Lieutenant Greg, <laughs> you've no idea what a pleasant surprise you turned out to be. But tell me, how did you know who I was? Well, I checked around. I made it my business to find out after I saw the dame go into your compartment. Linda Bennett, you know her. Yeah, real good. I've been escorting Miss Bennett for quite some time, only she doesn't know it. You've been trailing her? Yes, for three months. Well, why? What's the reason? Didn't she tell you anything about it? About uh, Larry Kramer? No, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Miss Bennett just told me she was on her way to Mexico City to find her brother. Mexico City, yeah, that might be it. He might be there then. Greg, would you mind letting me in on what's really going on? Oh, sure, sure. I'll get around to explanations a little later when there's time. Right now, I'll give you a brief version. You can help me save a guy's life, Drummond. Whose life? Larry Kramer's. He's got to be saved before it's too late. Greg, I don't know anything about your Larry Kramer, but talking about saving lives, I have a special interest in the same field, Linda Bennett being that special interest. Now, what are you giving me? There's a killer aboard this train. That's why Linda Bennett came to my compartment. That's what she told you. It's something I found out for myself, too. What do you mean? I talked to the killer in her compartment. He didn't leave any doubt as to what he's up to. If and when he finds Linda Bennett, he'll kill her. Is, is this on a level? On the level, Greg. And I want to make sure that he doesn't find Linda. Well, I don't know what your angle is in this, Drummond, but I'm just as anxious as you are to see that the Bennett dame doesn't get knocked off. Very well, then. Come on. She's still in my compartment. My man Denny is looking after her. She's not in your compartment, Drummond. What? What? I just came from there. But that guy you call Denny is still there with a lump on his head the size of an egg. Well, what happened? Is Denny all right? Well, he was out cold when I left, but the doc said he'll come around okay. We'd better find that Bennett dame before that gunsel catches up with her. I'll take the cars ahead. You will... Come on, look, look out! I'll return in a moment to continue our story. I dropped. I felt a sharp sting in my shoulder. I looked around. The train platform was empty, save for Lieutenant Gregg and me. And Gregg was lying a few feet from me, face down. I called to him. He didn't answer. I crawled over and touched him. He didn't move. Sid Gregg was dead. Sir, I feel downright rotten. My head. I was just about to ask you how that happened. Well, I don't quite know, sir. A few minutes after you left, there was a knock on the compartment door. I opened it. No one was there. Then I stepped out into the corridor. And something hard and heavy fell on your head. Yes, sir. Very hard and extremely heavy. Uh, Captain Drummond. Yes, Denny. Uh, Miss Bennett. Uh, she's all right. I imagine so. Where is she? I don't know. When the train pulled in at Tucson, I had every car searched. She wasn't aboard. But where could she have gone? She probably got off at Tucson unnoticed. It wouldn't have been difficult. I had um, lost interest in Linda Bennett momentarily. What do you mean, sir? I had a murder on my hands. Murder? Hmm. A West Coast police lieutenant named Sid Gregg was shot while I was with him. I was luckier than he. I escaped with a shoulder graze. Oh, really, sir? You're not making sense. Where does the police lieutenant come into this? Well, Greg didn't get a chance to tell me the full story. While I waited for this plane to Mexico City to take off, I phoned the West Coast police, and they gave me the details. Greg was interested in saving the life of a Larry Kramer. Kramer is sentenced to die next Wednesday for a murder. Greg believed Kramer to be innocent. He received special permission to work full-time on the case. Well, it still doesn't make sense to me, sir. What has all this to do with Linda Bennett, if it has anything to do with her? It certainly has, Denny. Linda Bennett was the state's material witness in the Kramer case. She was with Kramer. He was drunk when the shooting took place. 
Miss Bennett's testimony secured the conviction against Kramer. But what about that story she told us of her brother in Mexico City? Miss Bennett has no brother in Mexico City. She has no brother anywhere. But that envelope she gave you to mail. I mailed it. Oh, really, sir? That wasn't very clever of you, if I may say so. You may say so, Denny. But perhaps you'll be happy to hear I took the liberty of opening it first, before I placed a stamp on it, of course. Oh, uh, what did the letter say, sir? Nothing. What? Nothing? It was a blank. That is, it was this, a blank check. Here, look at it. The Triangle National Bank, Los Angeles. A blank check. What do you suppose that means? I don't know yet, but I'm holding on to it. I have an idea this blank draft is going to pay us dividends when we get to Mexico City. Mexico City? That's where this plane is taking us. Oh, yes. To Mexico City and to Linda Bennett. You seem to be fairly sure that Miss Bennett will turn up there. Fairly. But how do you know that the killer won't find her before we do? Because, Denny, right now he's relying on us to pick up Miss Bennett's trail for him. He booked reservations on this plane. What? On this plane? Don't, it, don't turn around. Believe me, he's here, sitting just a few seats behind us. Denny and I went to the Mexico City post office. As usual, the killer came along. Denny had his instructions. I watched him walk across the concourse and take his station near the general delivery boxes. I stopped at one of the writing tables and waited. I could see my friend the killer leaning against a pillar near the main entrance to the post office. He looked properly confused. We all waited, Denny, he and I. Less than an hour passed when it happened. Box 41 was opened. The blonde young lady drew out an envelope, closed the box and walked away. The young lady was Linda Bennett. She looked even more attractive with her hair dyed blonde. Denny followed after her, and after Denny, the ever-present pursuer. I took my place at the end of the line. Uh, I beg your pardon. Okay, it is my fault, senor. Senor, you are leaving. Uh, sorry, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Oh, you do not give me an opportunity to apologize, senor. Uh, it's quite all right. My name, senor, is Dolores. A very pretty name. You, uh, you do not go that way, senor. Uh, what? You turn. We go through the side door, this way. The car is waiting. The car? What are you talking about? You come the way I say. I have in my pocket a gun. You come with me, senor, or I will kill you right here. Yes, senor, you will get into the car. As I stepped into the car, I saw a shiny object flash past my eyes. And then all the world fell in on me. Oh! Here in my mind, I'm trying to remember, trying to fit the pieces together. And now, they're together. On my face, I can smell the sharp odor of chloroform. Now I see the clock clearly, 20 after 11. At 12, Kramer will die. 40 minutes to save a man's life. I've got to get out of here. I've... Ah, oh, senor, you are awake. As she bent down to place the chloroform cloth to my face, I reached out and grasped her arm. Oh, my arm, let go my arm. And with all the might left in me, you are I clenched my senor. fist and you are I set it on his mission. Oh. I rushed across the room to the door, opened it and walked out into the night. I never knew fresh air could smell so good. A few yards from the house, I saw the black sedan. I got into the car, switched on the ignition, slammed the car into gear, and cut into the darkness ahead. Al told me you just got back to town. I got good news for you, Mr. Barney. Good news, sir, uh, here. That's why I came back to Mexico City. Where's the better dame? Outside. Hey, what about the character you picked up with her? He's Drummond's boy. The boat outside with Steve. What about Drummond? The Lorries and Manuel got him out at their shack. 
All the eggs in uh, one basket, eh, Kimmy? <laughs> That's right, Mr. Varney. Uh, by the way, Steve took care of that Los Angeles cop, Greg, for you on the train. Yeah. Al told me. You can bring that uh, Bennett doll in now, Kevin. What about uh, Denny? I got nothing to say to him. Okay, Steve. Mr. Varney wants to see you. Go on, sweet face. This way. Here she is, Mr. Varney. Hello, Linda. What's the matter, baby? Aren't you glad to see Chris Varney again? She don't look like she's glad, Mr. Varney. Mm, that's funny. I hear she's been breaking her neck to locate me. That right, Linda? You sure played me for a sap, Varney. I went down the line for you. I did everything just as you wanted it. I lied my tongue out on that witness stand. I got that conviction against Larry Kramer that's for you. That's right, Linda. Those smart words of yours built a neat frame around Kramer. The neatest frame I ever saw. I showed you my appreciation, didn't I? Hmm. You got my check for 10000 I wrote it out for you nice and clear. Ten Gs, that's what it said, didn't it? It said nothing. When I looked at it the next morning, it was blank. Blank? What do you know about that, killer? Yeah, that's tough. You wrote that check with disappearing ink, Chris. That was a dirty, rotten trick to pull. You should have complained to the cops, Linda. All right, all right. Go ahead. Have your fun. Have a good laugh. Here's something else to laugh about, but maybe it won't be so funny. Five minutes to twelve, killer. Five minutes and Kramer You don't listen goes. to me, Chris. Because I'm not finished. You're making that 10000 good. Because if you don't, the police back on the coast are going to hear the real story. Mexico City is a long way from the coast. A long way. Yeah. I thought of that too, Chris. I gave an envelope to my roommate, Dolly Wilson. Nice kid, Dolly. And that envelope's got the whole story in it. If anything happens to me, Dolly turns that envelope over to the district attorney. A real nice kid, Dolly. Too bad. Too bad Steve had to smash in that pretty face of her. What? She tried to hold off from him. But how much plastering can a dame take in the face? <laughs> this the envelope you're talking about, Linda? You got it, huh? Yeah, I got it, baby. I got everything I want. Uh, Kill her. Yeah, Mr. Varney? You can take care of Drummond's boy now. Uh, what about her? She's next. Then you go out to the shack to take care of Drummond. Go ahead, Killer. Get started. Okay, Mr. Varney. Uh, sit down, Linda. You got a little time until Killer gets to you. Sit down and enjoy the sound of it. Cigarette, Linda? Yeah, two shots. Killer must be losing his touch. Sure you don't want to smoke, Linda? Okay, Killer, you can take her now. She's getting to be rotten company. Yes, Bonnie, maybe I can stir your interest. Oh, oh, Captain Drummond! Your trigger man is a bit indisposed, Bonnie. Yes, those shots you heard were directed at him. Uh, Captain Drummond, as you see, won the argument. Captain Drummond, I was next. He was going to kill me next. Well, if for only one reason, I'm glad he didn't get around to you. The state of California is eagerly awaiting your arrival, Miss Bennett, as a material witness in a new murder trial and the exoneration of Larry Kramer. Uh, oh, sir. What is it, Denny? L look, sir, that clock is past midnight. Kramer, it's too late. No, Denny, it's not too late. Before I arrived here at Varney's place, I got a call through to the warden at the state prison. You got a stay of execution? Yes. I promised new and revealing evidence in the case against Larry Kramer. Well, sir, shall we wrap up the evidence and take it along? By all means. Oh, Captain Drummond, just one more thing. Yes? I know mine is not the reason why, but how did you ever get here, sir? How did you know where to come? That blank check of Miss Bennett's. What about it? It wasn't really blank at all. I dipped it in a solution of lemon juice this morning. Lemon juice? Yes. The acids in the juice have the happy faculty of causing disappearing ink to make a reappearance. The check was for $10,000 made out to Linda Bennett and signed by Chris Varney. It wasn't difficult to find Varney's residence here in Mexico City. By the way, Varney, this should be of small comfort to you and your friends. 
The ink the law uses has absolutely no disappearing properties whatsoever. Once it's down on uh, indictment papers, it sticks. Thank <laughs> you.